This is Twit. So, first of all, um, I guess give us your take on the severity of these two security flaws. Here we are a week later, so there have definitely been a lot of developments which we'll dive into. But, uh, you know, based on what you first heard and where we're at right now, is this still kind of throwing a lot of red flags for you? Oh, it's a it's a huge assortment of red flags. The the thing that makes this special is the sheer scope of what it affects. It's not just PCs and Macs and smartphones. It's also servers and cloud services and hosted applications and basically anything you do that involves technology in 2018 has the potential to be impacted by this. The closest thing that I can think to uh, that I can think of that's an analog to this is the WannaCry ransomware outbreak from last year, uh, which affected a lot of people. And it was based on a vulnerability in the server message block protocol that affected so many different uh, networking systems. And this has the potential to be even more widespread and destructive than WannaCry. And of course, everybody is scrambling to kind of take control of of the situation, push out updates. This has been happening now for a week. A uh, few, few things on that topic. It, Intel has kind of been escalating how serious it's been taking this. I think initially it was kind of a statement of, eh, it's really not that big a deal. And then I was like, wait a minute, maybe it is a big deal. And then their third statement was like, okay, yeah, we got a big deal on our hands. Have you been uh, satisfied with with how Intel has responded to this, considering they're kind of at the heart of this in, in many ways? Well, well there's a two-part answer to that. Um, number one is the embargo. Intel has been working with uh, a lot of hardware and software and partners and security researchers for months on this. So let's let's give them credit for that. Um, and in addition, the embargo on this issue was broken a week early. So a lot of people were scrambling uh, when they thought they had a week to get their responses all organized. Uh, suddenly uh, the register broke the story uh, a week early and, and everyone had to put out statements that you know, they were they thought they had another week to go on. Having said that, Intel has been, I would say, less than forthcoming in uh, in its responses. And yes, I think it's fair to say that they've been trying to minimize this rather than treat it as a common sense issue to be uh, to be solved. And that's not that that's never a good strategy uh, for crisis management. Yeah. So I know we're going to get into the problems with the Windows updates, uh, but but I want to ask you, do you think that we would have seen these problems? What would have been different if they had had that time, if everyone had had that time, if uh, if they hadn't broken the story, the register hadn't broken the story earlier? Would we have seen something different specifically with the Windows updates? Well, you would have seen the Windows update going out on the day on, on Patch Tuesday when it was supposed to go out. That's when the embargo was originally supposed to lift. Um, and the fact that that the embargo was broken a week early meant that Microsoft had to rush the patch out. Um, they would have had they would have had a week of extra testing uh, available for it. N you know, no telling whether they would have identified the AMD issue, but they would have had a week of extra testing. More importantly, it would have gone out on the normal schedule that they go out. On, uh, on, you know, on Patch Tuesday. And so as a result, especially large organizations, uh, corporations, hospitals, uh, educational institutions would have been able to just incorporate it into their regular response plan to security issues. Yeah, talk a little bit about, you, you just mentioned there the AMD issue. Of course, Microsoft issued the patch, I think it was earlier this week, and then had to pull it pretty soon after because it was it was rendering a lot of AMD machines kind of uh, you know, they, they they would power it out, wouldn't power up again. It was just basically poning a lot of things just with the update itself. So Microsoft stopped that. Um, I mean, Microsoft, I imagine at this point, kind of taking its time to get the update right. What what can happen in the interim until that happens? I mean, are, are there any active threats that are targeting this, these things now that we're a weekend? Well, there are certainly a lot of people working on developing yeah. uh, exploits uh, for this. You know, and there's 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 proof of concept code out there, but so far I'm not aware of any active exploits for this. And I think, I think if there were, I, I think we'd be hearing about it. So, and that's, that's basically the, the reason why in my article I said, don't panic, 
um, because this is something it's it's better to respond thoughtfully and carefully and methodically than to try to um, you know uh, ready ready fire aim I think I mentioned in there is <laughs> is rarely a good strategy uh, for th for this kind of thing and there certainly is. There, there certainly is enough time, days, probably even weeks, for people to uh, to, to uh, install mitigations, uh, to assess the state of their hardware and software, and to uh, and to develop a plan. This certainly isn't anything that um, that you can push off until next month. Uh, but but a lot of the hard work has already been done by the hardware and software vendors over the last couple months to get many of the patches ready for this. Uh, Intel, now one thing that, that I found uh, a little bit odd is, you know, Intel has released microcode updates that it gives to the hardware manufacturers and they in turn incorporate them into the firmware and BIOS in, uh, in devices like PCs. Um, and apparently there some of the uh, early code that went out to at least one vendor, Lenovo, uh, they had to pull. And, and uh, you know, so it, it, we're still in a very fluid situation in terms of having patches ready, in particular for hardware manufacturers who have to uh, patch the firmware of their systems. That is such an important component of any modern device. You do not want to get that wrong because when you do, uh, you get a situation that happens uh, that it becomes an exaggerated version of what happens with the AMD devices where, you know, the device simply doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And in some cases, you can brick it uh, either permanently or for the long term. Mm -hmm. So, so your, your writing is focused on the enterprise. It's focused on Windows admins. Um, but there was a lot of panicking among the regular people. I mean, there's, there's something different between like, the, you know, the person that needs to patch a hospital system and like my retired dad at home on the couch with his iPhone. What do you think? I mean, do you think that the way the mainstream media treated this and, and got everyone like sort of, uh, you know, very scared, flapping their arms around about, you know, how this was the worst vulnerability ever. Do you think that... Uh, what do you think that that has an uh, what kind of effect do you think that has on on people in general just the kind of fear that we're seeing coming out directed towards consumers well it uh, it's a very good question and it it's kind of the nature of the modern the modern news business tech news political news you know, <laughs> entertainment news, um, you know, everything is the worst thing ever. <laughs> uh, and, and you get a little uh, warning fatigue on the part of consumers when they see, oh, this horrible thing happened, but as it turns out, it wasn't so horrible after all. Well, the reason it wasn't horrible is the same reason that, you know, Y2K way, way back when was not a big deal is because a lot of people have done a lot of work in advance to, to ensure that it doesn't become a big deal. I, I think you're going to see, uh, you know, we've already got the patches that have gone out for, uh, for Macs, for iOS devices, for almost all, um, Linux servers, uh, and of course for uh, for Windows devices, um, those are those are going out and they're you know and they're rolling out very effectively. And for the average consumer, for your dad, my dad, you know, uh, anyone's dad or mom, um, staying up to date on patches for their device and doing sensible things is probably going to keep them out of trouble. This isn't. This isn't a drive-by problem. This isn't something that you know where you need to take your device and you know and run it through a shredder because you can't trust it anymore. Um, that, that, you know, this is this is a it's a big deal for organizations uh, who could be targeted for something like this, um, and it's certainly important for consumers to practice the same sort of precautions that they would keep to take ransomware or other forms of malware off their systems, but it's not uh, qualitatively different from uh, things in the past. 
I know one thing that I, f- I feel like has alerted a lot of people in, in in the last week around these stories is this idea of performance hit once you actually do get the update. This 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 thought that you know this world full of machines that are affected by this might get a fix. A certain percentage of them might get a fix, but even with the fix, it's going to come with this horrible byproduct, which is slowing your machine down 10, 20, 30 percent along the way. And uh, I, I guess talk a little bit about that performance hit and in particular how that could relate to business and, and you know, business systems, servers, that sort of Windows server, uh, and what kind of cost that could bring to an organization uh, when suddenly everything is slowed down? Or is that over covered in the media, do you think? Well, I'm not sure that we have enough uh, verifiable data yet to, uh, to make a, uh, an accurate judgment on that. Intel published some benchmarks today uh, that they ran on Windows 10 systems with CP with with their highest quality their highest rated uh, CPU the i7 family from uh, from the last two years and they showed uh, an, an average performance hit of you know in, in ranging from zero to uh, to 10 percent and both of those numbers are outliers for those so in an organization, it has desktop PCs that are less than, you know, less than two or three years old. The likelihood is that you're not going to see significant performance hits in uh, in, in productivity. Uh, where, where you are likely to see problems uh, is twofold. One is on older hardware running older operating systems, especially older versions of Windows, including Windows 7. Those, those kinds of systems... Um, you know the the fix for this uh, for this vulnerability requires that instructions basically be executed more than once in order to for the you know the second time to make sure that they're uh, that the result is secure um, and you know so when you start having to execute instructions multiple times uh, you you take a hit on performance and because of the design of older processors the pre Haswell uh, processors Ivy Bridge and and earlier, the performance hit is is a, is going to be more significant on those. Having said that, though, uh, those machines are already pretty slow compared to the the uh, you know to to modern devices. Uh, so I think you know for people who are still running those older devices, it's a question of you know it's going to go from from this is annoying to this is really annoying. The worst part, though, is going to be in in the cloud and in web services and potentially in things that are really I.O. focused uh, and not with SSDs. That's the you know, the one thing that I've read is that's sort of the scenario where you can see, uh, you know, the largest performance hits more than more than 10 percent. And when those start to affect workloads in big web services you know that's where uh where time is literally money microseconds um mil, you know milliseconds and microseconds are literally money mm-hmm. and and that's where you're going to see engineers trying to to do creative things to uh to fix the problem but the problem will become apparent there yeah uh, Ed Bott, it's always a pleasure getting you on the show. We really appreciate you uh, taking time out of your evening to talk with us about this. Where do you want people to follow all of your work on ZDNet? Oh, gosh, you know, ZDNet, uh, just go to the ZDNet homepage. Um, we've got an entire crew of people who've been doing a very good job of covering this. Um, and, uh, and my stuff pops up there regularly and you'll see it. But the, the ZDNet crew is great. ZDNet.com. Uh, you know, send send your re- send your viewers there. Absolutely, Ed Bot. Thank you again. We'll talk to you soon. Have a wonderful hey, my night. My pleasure. Bye bye.